New York. Cool. Long Island. Where are you from? I can hear you down south somewhere. I'm in North Kakalaki, North Carolina. I was going to say, pretty close to North Carolina. Yep. Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're live. We're live on YouTube. We're live on YouTube? Awesome. Yes, we are. Holy shit, I've never done YouTube live in my entire life. Well, it's this, amazing. It's always, uh, it's always the first well, time, bro. Oh, um, let, give me one second, and yeah. I'm just gonna send, send yeah. a link. Her, her, uh, ice Rhea, this might work out okay. What's him? What? Hey, I know, turn the camera off. There he goes. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, yeah, I told you I have a face for radio. Anyway, how you guys doing? <laughs> What's up? All it's right, here we are. Okay, let me get my zoom up because I see this, uh, this uh, YouTube thing is a little, uh, not should I record in case? Yeah, it should be, yeah. It should be, yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, all right. Why? What's it? What do you see on YouTube? I have a YouTube on now, it seems fine. Record on computer, okay. All right, hey, everybody, this is my very first live stream. Well, oh. I mean, I've done Facebook Live where I'm alone, but this is the first time I'm doing a panel thing, and it's gonna be the first of many. And Manny, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know it's and Tony Dio, thank you for being here. Absolutely. And Wayne, thank you so much for helping me get this up on YouTube. Because I'm I'm so computer illiterate that uh Wayne walked me through it. And even when when him walking me through it, he got really frustrated because I suck at computer stuff. Oh my god, it was like trying to talk to my grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. And uh yeah, so I'm gathering us all together here um, to talk about Van, the top 10, our top 10 Van Halen songs. We're and, talking uh, about the Sammy Hagar era, right? Oh, my God, you actually own those? Yeah, what? <laughs> this is my favorite album, well, Van Halen 3. Uh, Ralph, I do, but we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> I think, I mean, we'll wait. Go wash your hands. All right. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, no, no, look, uh, yeah, I'm a Sammy Hagar basher, yeah, but people that love Sammy Hagar, I love them. I, I'm good friends with a lot of Sammy lovers. I hate bands, not fans. I don't have no problems with anybody that loves Sammy Hagar. That's great, man. It's awesome. I, I have no problem. I, I just have a problem with Sammy Hagar, you know? Well, not isn't, wasn't uh, Hagar going to play Pantera and ACDC at one time? Yeah, and Led Zeppelin and Errol Smith and... <laughs> I think he said Aerosmith too, didn't he? Yeah, he did actually. Yeah, that was pretty pathetic. But yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, uh, are are there going to be Sammy Hagar songs? I mean, I know it's not on my list, but I wonder if any. I don't mind. We're going to have a uh, Sammy I don't know. on this. Maybe, so, might be one or two. Uh, <laughs> there might be one or two. All right. <laughs> I don't, not for I don't know if it's for me. Could be for Manny. I, I, Manny loves Sammy Hagar. I'm down to laugh. Okay. Well, let's not get carried away, but I'm a fan. Of I it. mean, he is wearing a Metallica shirt, him. so. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 uh, Manny, you're kind of like, oh, I like both versions of Van Halen, right? Right, I do, I do. And I uh, like some of it, but it's not comparable but, uh, to David Lee Roth. Yeah, well, but, it's two different bands, really. I mean, if it you is think about totally it. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the Sam and Dave tour. I don't know if you guys remember that tour. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, and working. when you saw them live, back to back, you couldn't believe these guys were in the same band. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it was incredible. Um, it, uh, one thing I do want to say is I get tired of people bitching about David Lee Roth. I think he's a good singer. We'll talk about that, too. Oh, well, yeah. I was at the uh, Sam and Dave concert in Raleigh. I was working the show, the one where the two, the managers got in a fight backstage and one of them punched the other one. Did, did, did you witness oh, wow. that? Pretty much. I never really saw the punch. I just heard the scuffle and a bunch of shit went down, and I was just, like, laughing. That was funny. Daily Ross' manager beat him up, right? Pretty much, yeah. I figure Sammy's manager was this. Uh, in the chat here, this, uh, Colin Madden says, didn't Lita Ford say Jimmy Page asked her about playing rhythm guitar on tour with Zip? Oh, okay, cool. You can see the, the chat. Wayne, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have you in charge of the chat. I'll be in charge of the chat. 
joining the chat because I don't have the chat and let me turn off my phone. Um, He's saying, did Jimmy Page, uh, didn't Lita say, Lita Ford say Jimmy Page asked her about playing rhythm guitar on tour with, with Led Zeppelin? Uh, well, it's because I turned Led Zeppelin down. That's why. That sounds like a Sammy Hagar story. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like Jimmy Page just wanted to get laid and just said that to her. And it probably worked. There's a lot of there's a Martin Pop Pop Off is in here. He says, "Hey, boss, looking forward to this." Uh, the Koof Jackson, Hey Doc, and Jimmy Swartz. He says, "Awesome, Martin." I wish Martin could have been part of this. I should have asked him. He should have. He could still join. Yeah. Well, Martin. He is awake. <laughs> He's awake. If you want to join, I'll send you a link, man. Uh, let us know. Well, I mean, you got to write, yeah. write up your top ten Van Halen song. Well, or if you have to talking? think about that, then maybe you shouldn't be on the show. What were you showing there, Manny? I was just showing this thing I got from Hamilton Books, a bootleg, uh -huh. Van Halen, 1978 Tokyo, radio broadcast. Great show. I mean, this has been bootlegged 7,000 times, but I just bought it recently. So Nice. Hell yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, recently, man, I have many soundboards of Van Halen. Man, not recently, about yeah. a year ago. I got one from a soundboard from 1979. In West Palm Beach, Florida, it's my favorite one. It's my favorite bootleg so far. But then, there, then there's also what was it Pasadena where uh, they just got signed and they even said it during the show. This yeah, and the Pasadena City. Yeah, it was City. Pasadena. Yeah. Pasadena City. Yeah. Seventy-seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great show. The great Wayne right there sent me that on vinyl. Yeah, I found that at a yard sale for ten bucks. Yeah, it, it was. It's like this vinyl with a paper with tape on it. Yeah, it really cheap, we, cheaply made. Well, you know, guys, this oh, week, this weekend, this is, the, yeah. this is the fortieth anniversary of Van Halen ruling the Us Festival. Oh wow! Really? Did, did Memorial you, Memorial Day weekend, nineteen eighty-three. Did you guys see that thing that that fan made documentary this guy's putting up? I haven't watched it yet. I Not saw yet, it, but I saw it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's supposed it was on to be YouTube about, over the week. Yeah, it's supposed to be about 1984, but the first two episodes are very much about Diver Down and and uh, the US Festival, and it's really well made. I mean, for a fan made video, and there's going to be a few more coming up soon. And I like, highly recommend it, you know. And, and anybody out there, download it because who knows? They may take those down, you know. It's quite if possible. There's music in it, they'll definitely take them down at some point. Yeah. There's some. There's some, and then there's a lot of the, the zero demos are in there. Mm. You know, which I don't think is that the Gene Simmons demos? The zero yeah. demos? Is that yeah. what that is? Yeah. I got that yeah, on okay. vinyl too. Green vinyl I bought on eBay. It's really, really good. Yeah. Green is awesome. Mm -hmm. So I've got a collection of demo tapes on CD, but I don't know if they're the gene simmons ones or not um and it's kind of interesting because there's a song on there called bullet head which yeah. they literally rewrote on a different kind of truth and uh which by the way is a great album in my opinion i love um, it yeah i think it's great i do too um i i you know i, I like sammy hagar but the real van halen just comes out on that album in my opinion uh, again two different two different bands for sure Oh, yeah. Yeah. Completely different. And uh, hey, you know what? Uh, I've said this before. When I heard Sammy Hager join Van Halen, I wasn't mortified. I was like, all right, let's see how this turns out. You know, I, I didn't really hate Sammy Hagar back in the day. I even saw him open for Journey and Aerosmith, where, by the way, that was in 1982, where Sammy Hagar said on Howard Stern, he never opened for nobody since 1979. That's he bullshit. Opened, he opened yeah. up Bunch of people, yeah. You open up for ZZ Top too down here, but anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, I was like, I wasn't. Oh no, Sam Hagar. I wasn't a fan. I didn't own any Sam Hagar, but I was also thinking, oh, this might be good. I mean, he plays guitar. Eddie, let's see how this turns out. And then I heard, why can't this be love? And I was like, oh, you know. Yeah, the first time they got together was Eddie and Sammy at Farm Aid that year, and they played rock and roll from Zeppelin, and it was killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that live when it happened. Yeah, it was great. The only thing I hated about that was when Eddie went into the guitar solo at the end, it went into a commercial. Ah. Son of a bitch, because he was uh, about to do eruption or something, you know? But, uh... You guys have killer memories. Huh? 
So you guys have killed memories. Yeah. I mean, I have a great, great memory when it comes to music. I can tell you set lists from the 80s, but I have like a horrible memory on everything else. <laughs> same, same here. <laughs> I, I, can't tell you, I can't tell you the songs in order, but I can tell you what Iron Maiden played on the Peace of Mind tour, what Black Sabbath played on the Heaven and Hell tour. And this is 40 somewhat years ago. And I got this diamond memory of all the Van Halen shows. I saw all Van Halen shows from Women and Children First to uh, 1984. I could tell you every set list on all those shows. Have any of you been lucky enough to see Van Halen in the 80s with Dave? I saw him on the 1984 tour. Okay, so then you you understood the magic of original Van Halen Live. Yeah. I mean, it was like no other band. The, the way that they would pump up the crowd, the light show, it was just phenomenal, unbelievable. And then, you know, then with Sammy Hagar, because I did see 5150 for free, and also BTO was opening. I like BTO, so I went. Yeah, I saw that. 5150, that was a horrible show. Like the best concert to the worst concert. Well, same <laughs> thing, you know? But anyway, all right. Do you, guys, Go ahead. do you guys know why Hagar did not do any uh, David Lee Roth songs in that time? Because his Deal ego was too big. Uh, Ozzy songs, and we know Deal wasn't a huge Ozzy fan, but he would sing <laughs> the Ozzy era songs. They did, and... they did Ain't Talking About Love and... I can't remember. I know. I think they did jump on some shows. Yeah. Really, now really, on the, really. I saw them when the live album came out. The, the one the, the Hagar live album, and they were doing some yeah, more David Lee Roth stuff. Then yeah. they did. I, I think they did somebody get me a doctor, but Michael Anthony sang it. If I remember right. Right. Yeah. Um, they did. They did. Uh, never sang these tunes live. You know. They opened with You Really Got Me when I saw them on 5150. I think. I'm pretty sure they opened with that. But uh, all right, guys. So we all wrote up 10 songs. And how I want to do this is uh, we each, we each uh, named five songs. The first five, 10 to five, and we go to the next one. All right? From, so, from the bottom up. I got you. Okay, cool. All right, why, don't you, why don't you go first, Tony? Okay. So this was really tough. I mean, I thought about it and you know it was just uh so many great songs and uh i like so much of the deep cuts not just the hits and so forth uh it was really tough i had on, on number 10 I'm, I'm i'm stuck between two uh i'm gonna go with uh somebody get me a doctor because that's just it's just a kick-ass song and it, and it beat out out of love again just so you know they were my two and i couldn't uh couldn't decide between. And then um, number nine, I'm going to go with a somewhat of a hit, uh, Running With The Devil, because I think that's one of the greatest opening tracks of any rock album. Just a kick-ass song with the horn kicks in at the beginning and just fades into the song and that, ba that bass line kicks in. It's like a heartbeat and it's just like, ah, you know, it's so cool. And uh, number eight, uh, one ear to the ground, he's listening to the dead. Hang him high from Diver Down. That's a great one, great riff. You know, it, uh, I think uh, there's a demo of that, what it's called, Last Night. Yeah. Uh, the same riff or whatever. Uh, number seven, I'm going to go DOA, Dead or Alive. Another great riff, cool song. Number six, I'm going to go with uh, Taking Whiskey to the Party Tonight, Romeo Delight. Nice. So that's my um, 10 through 6. All right. Okay. How about you, man? You want me to go? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Number 10. Probably might be the only Sammy Hagar song on here. Why can't this be love? Reason is I actually like the pop melody on there. It's really poppy. Um, and, uh, I used to hate it, and then I grew to love it. Um, mostly it's a melody, and I just think Eddie Van Halen is just really... Everyone talks about what a great guitarist he is, which he was, but much like Jimi Hendrix, he also was a great songwriter, and people forget that. Um, and uh, I really, really just think it's a great melody. Somebody Get Me a Doctor, uh, just killer um, song. Women in Love, great vocal harmonies. Um, 
Dave Lee Roth's sense of humor comes through in that song completely. So I really like that. Full Bug from Diver Down, a deep cut. I mostly like his the lyrics make me laugh, you know. I want to give you woman the best part of a man. I just think that's great David Lee Roth uh, yeah. lyric. Oh, and uh, I'm trying to remember the song title. Somebody will correct me. She's the woman off of a different kind of magic. Again, killer riff, killer David Lee Roth vocal um, for sure. And I got on here in the last minute, so I uh, apologize. I just heard just think about songs. And off Van Halen 1, Jamie's Crying, again, songwriting. People talk about a player, but Michael Anthony and Dave Lee Ruff's harmonizing, great by Van Halen, and great man who is slightly a little lighter. Just great, great stuff. Uh, matter of fact, I just think of songwriters, those two guys. I'm talking about DLR and Eddie Van Halen are so underrated. They're such a killer team. It's like Jagger, Richards, Perry, and uh, Steven Tyler. Um, I would say Iommi and an Ozzy, but Ozzy didn't really write. But the point is, you know, just a great team of vocalist and guitar player. You know, the, and a yin and yang, because I don't think those two men had anything in common except their love of music. So that's my fight. Yeah, they, they 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 pretty much hated each other, and that's I think what brought the magic to the music. That friction made it made it so good, you know. Where Sammy and Eddie loved each other, so you see where that went. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's my. I don't have a problem with Van Halen. With, I won't call him Van Hagar with Sammy Hagar, but I will agree that it sounds a lot safer. There's no danger to it. The fun aspect, like in the song, get it up. Do you guys remember that off 5150? Yeah. Sammy Hager tries too hard to be like David Lee Roth. Don't be David Lee Roth. Have respect enough to be an original, you know. And uh, anyway, that's my take on it. Sorry, dudes. I talk too much. Who's next? Oh, that's yeah. good. All right. Dude. How about you? Uh, well, in the chat here, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Colin Madden uh, picked a bunch of songs. Uh, Drop Dead Legs. Oh, uh, and I don't know who this is. R. E. He said one foot out the door. Yeah, love that one. Yeah. Uh, Rich loves F N A F. He put he put uh, push comes to shove. Great song. Yeah. And then Co Colin again with uh, where have all the good times gone? I love their cover of that. It's great. Yeah. Uh, and Rich says uh, I've always liked Me Wise Magic. It is a very good mm -hmm. song. It might be on my list. <clears throat> Martin Popoff says uh, he really can't pick anything from a different kind of truth, but all would come in. in uh, pretty soon enough uh rich not many know it uh colin madden light up the sky oh. uh, martin popoff says unchained or mean street usually wins the contest uh somebody else said uh, me wise magic so all right my list are you ready yes all right 5150 every song off of 5150 yeah <laughs> 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 Actually, I, to tell you the truth, my I really got into Van Halen when Sammy Hagar did the song. Oh, not Sammy Hagar when they when they when Van Halen did the song uh, "Humans Being" for that movie Twister or whatever. I actually like that song. That that song really got me. I mean, I liked all like 1984, like Panama and Jump and all that stuff. But for some reason, that song was like, all right, finally, Van, because that song's pretty heavy, you know. Yeah. And I said, all right, finally, I'm going to get into Van Halen. <clears throat> so that got me into Van Halen. So "Humans Being" is going to be my top one. Uh, but then going back to the the uh, um, David Lee Ross stuff and the Cradle of Rock, love that song. Uh, I'll wait. I love how that song. Is. It's pretty slow. It's got like a really cool groove to it. But I, like Manny mentioned before about their harmonies, I, that's what really gets me into their songs so much. Those harmonies, you know, and almost every song has some kind of harmony thing going on. Uh, Ain't talking about love. I love that one. Sorry. It's a good song. Uh, Unchained. And uh, that's my five. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Uh, all right. Here's my uh, 10 to six is uh, going with the full bug at number 10. Uh, I, I got to also say, I love every single song that Van Halen did with Daily Roth, except for the instrumental of 1984. I don't care for that. But I don't mind Jump. 
I every, really every song, huh? Show it's a hit. Yeah, there's every single song off the six pack I love. Every oh, really? so when I'm leaving off, I love. Even ice cream man. Love ice cream. Love ice cream. Ice cream man rules, oh, yeah. Wayne. That's cool. Great. Wow. But the full bug off of Diver Down uh makes my number 10. At number nine, I'm going to light up the sky. There's just something so magical about that damn song. And it's ripping, man. It's heavy and I just love it. Uh, at number eight, something that Wayne and I did, the Atomic Punk. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, did, we did a cover of Atomic Punk, and yes, it's probably the most scorching, well, probably the second most scorching song off the first album. Absolutely love it. At number seven, I love Take Your Whiskey Home. There's just yeah. something about that damn song, man. I love the lyrics. It makes, uh, what is it? I halfway to the label till I can make it to the night. So awesome. And number six, Romeo's Delight. Smoking, yeah, killer, heavy. First time I saw Van Halen on the Women and Children First Tour, they opened with that song. Very special song. And yeah, that's uh, my uh, t- my first five. So, uh, all right, Dio. So let's take it home, man. Give me your top five. Top five. Uh, I'm on fire. It's going to be number five. Just a smoking song. Um, going to go number four. Uh, love little guitars off of um, Diver Down, including the intro. It, you got to have both parts. And it's just a cool, it's very it's cool. It's a poppy yeah. song, but it's really cool. Loved when they when they played it live at Us Festival and Eddie and Michael are playing those little small guitars. That was really yeah. cool. Uh, number three. Unchained, definitely one of the, the coolest riffs ever. And I always think about that bit music video or that they had the live clip where Alex lights the gong on fire at the end and he's just beating the crap out of it, man. Such a cool version of that song. Number two, we'll go with Mean Street. Another just fat ass riff. I mean, they've got so many great riffs, but that's probably one of their meanest, no pun intended. Um, and my number one is going to come off uh, my favorite. Van Halen album, Van Halen 2, and that's Light Up the Sky. And it's like you said, such a magical song. Smoking, killer riff, got the little drum part in yeah. there, the drum solo part in there and stuff. Yeah, great song. So Light Up the Sky is my number one. I was very happy to see them play that live. They open with it. Yep. Deadly. All right, Manny, what's your talk? All right. Number five from Van Halen, I'm the One. I, again, just love that song. And I'm with Ralph. I like every uh, every tune the original Van Halen did. And one thing I noticed about all their picks, do you notice the diversity of music or sound that that band got the original lineup? You know? Yeah. Again, nobody talks about that. Drop Dead Legs, which is the complete <laughs> opposite of I'm the One. Killer Riff, uh, Almost simplistic by Van Halen standards, but I love it. Me Wise Magic. When they reunited to do that song, I was so excited. I couldn't wait till they toured. And of course, they didn't tour because they got some big, stupid fight. But again, David Lee Ross' vocal on there is incredible. Michael, I don't know if Michael Anthony's on there or not. I heard he is, and I heard he isn't. I'm assuming he's on there, but I'm not sure. One of you will have to tell me. Uh, so this is love, a great, great, great song. And I put Eruption as one, so people don't say it's a song, but he changed guitar, and prior to him, you'd have to go back to Jimi Hendrix. There are other, other guitar greats, Jeff Beck, Richie Blackmore, Tony Iommi, but nobody revolutionized the instrument in the eyes of the public since Jimi Hendrix, Saudi Van Halen, and that's solo. So that's why he shares it. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree with that. I love how they put that song, though, Eruption, and uh, what the hell's the other song that they put on the radio after all? I ain't talking about love, right? Oh, you really got no, me. you really got me. I know, on the album, but on, when you listen to it on radio, they play Eruption and then Ain't Talking About Love together. Oh, they do and, that? Well, they yeah. don't do it out here. They do it. No, really? Because yeah, here, yeah, over here, they do like the album. Yeah. Really? All right, that's, that's strange, because here, that's the only way I've ever heard it. And when I got the album and I saw they're not even near each other, I'm like, what the hell? You know, it doesn't make sense. And it makes sense to me if those two are like joined together and it, it always sticks in my head that way. That's I, funny to hear that nobody else hears that. Hmm. 
Interesting. I guess that's a New York thing. Yeah. I guess. Well, uh, uh, give us your top five there, Wayne. Uh, DOA. I really love that chorus, and that song's really cool. And the uh, and the most classic line ever. They found a dirty face kid in a garbage can. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's so classic. Yeah. It's great. It's not. It makes zero sense for the song, but yet it's perfect for the song. Yeah. Uh, a song that I did not like until we covered it, Ralph. Atomic Punk. Really? Yeah. I thought it was just a, a terrible mess. <laughs> and <laughs> when I played it and had to learn how to do the drums and everything, and and I, and I heard us finish the song, I it, it really it got to me. You know, I, I really I understood how it was now, and it, it's one of my favorite songs. It still is a little wonky, but it, it's it's a cool song. I, I like it. Um, sorry about this one. Why can't this be love? But Manny picked it too, so uh, you know. I love that I'm song. Allowed. And Manny mentioned this no, one no, as I'm well. Sorry. I thought you meant so. This is love. Oh, why yeah. can't this be love? No, I don't yeah. like that one. <laughs> uh, Manny picked this one too. Me, wise magic, and I'm the same as he he is uh, with the way because it was on that sound, not the soundtrack, the, um, like a best greatest song, hits, know, greatest hits. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, just hearing them back together and the, the, the sound of that song, just with the, the musicianship and the way that song was uh, mixed and produced or whatever, it sounds awesome. And, and David's voice sounds great. That's probably like the best he's sound in like a while, you know? And, uh, I wanted to hear much more of that Van Halen, you know, and it sucks that whatever happened, happened. And we didn't really get that until years and years later, but, uh, eventually, you know, thank God it happened. And my last one, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pick Dreams. No, really? Yeah, I like Dreams. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's well written. It's well written. It I is like a dreams. good song. I like Dreams. I think it's a good song. It's just not even in my top fifty. Yeah. Well, like I said, I started my I kind of started with Sammy Hagar as a Van Halen fan, but it, the David Lee Roth is you know my you know my pick really. Uh, I I I actually hate Dreams. Really? I hate. I can that see. Song with a passion. Yeah, it's but it's cool that you like it. It's all right. I I can understand that. I mean, it's it starts all wimpy with the nee, 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 you know, with the keyboards and all that stuff. But it remains wimpy throughout the whole song. It, it it's got a catchy chorus. Hey, it is. It's catchy like AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now here's my top five. Uh, at number five, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. I don't think they sang that song, did they? Yeah, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> uh, hear about it later off fair warning the perfect it's such like when people say david can't sing listen to hear about it later then get back to me sounds amazing on that damn song i uh, love the hell out of that song and number four probably the first one i'm going to do that's kind of like a hit ain't talking about love perfect and and like the perfect live song with the hey 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 part yep smoke and tune absolutely love it and and just to stop at this song to show you the genius of Edward Van Halen. The guy is the shredding master, but listen to the solo on Ain't Talking About Love. Listen Very simplistic. Solo. Yeah, listen to the solo on Everybody Wants Them. Mm. He plays for the song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's genius. He's not showing off. He's playing for the song. And Ain't Talking About Love, love the hell out of that solo. That guitar oh, intro too just gives you goosebumps yeah. when that starts. Oh yeah, yeah, forget it. That's amazing. And then at number three, I'm going with Mean Street. I mean, I would say it's the most stinking awesome groove ever in a Van Halen song, but that one belongs to my number two. But this is close to being like the most groove. The groove on Mean Street is just insane. It's just insanity. And you know the the way Dave structures the the you know we don't care about tomorrow because we're sick of these four walls you know and i'll give you some kicks like you have never seen that is pure awesome um number two is the most stinkingest awesome groove ever that almost made tony's list my number two is out of love absolutely love the hell of that song i love the scatty vocals that david's doing and to me, the VIP of that song is Alex Van Halen. Listen yeah. to Alex Van Halen and Out of Love. Sounds like a drum solo. It's and Eddie has a very scatty guitar solo when he comes in with it as well. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Two solos. He does yeah. yeah. It's just a ripping tune. And I was so happy uh, they did that when I saw him on the... Uh, it's funny you mentioned Alex Van Halen like having a drum solo in that song, but I feel like almost every song he has a drum solo in. 
That one's a little more though, a little more yeah. over the place. But he's I think he's very underrated. Oh, he's like one of the top drummers. Incredible. And yeah, I, I don't understand underrated. how he could be. Like I don't really hear too many people oh. talk about him, but he is like oh. He's one of my favorite drummers, but I think the yeah. reason he's underrated is because his brother is Eddie Van Halen. Exactly. Yeah, I guess. You know, he took the yeah. spotlight, but maybe if he there wasn't an Eddie Van Halen in the group, he would get more praise. But yeah. I love Al Alec Van Halen. Every time I'd see him do a drum solo live, it was awesome. Yeah, he he's he's great. Yeah, he's a badass. My number one is on fire. And I'll never forget the greatest show I ever saw in my life was the Fair Warning Tour. I mean, there was nothing like it. Not even Van Halen after I saw, and I saw women show first, but I, when they opened that show with On Fire and you hear that, dang, 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 but the stage is all black. And then when Eddie does that, da -da 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 -da, and the band kicks in, the whole stage is lit up and David Lee Roth is like 20 feet in the air doing a split. It was the most breathtaking thing I ever saw in my life. I was like, whoa, it was just beyond amazing. So On Fire, is my favorite and it, it's been my favorite since that fair warning show uh right. just a, a smoking killer amazing tune so that's our top 10 van halen i would say honorable mentions but i'll just say every other song on the on the six pack <laughs> except for 1984 is my honorable mention you guys got any honorable mentions oh yeah hey I mean, today yeah, there, there's so many. I mean, yeah, yeah. most of most hate Sammy Hagar stuff, but there is everything so else on the first six albums. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's yeah, a, there's like a lot you of said, man, it's just so much, so many great songs. I, I would have added Jump and Panama because I do love those songs, but uh, you know, we've heard those songs for years, like our whole entire life. And, you know, I, I like other songs too, so have it's hard guys, to not put those songs. But yeah. have you guys noticed um, Running with the Devil on like regular like? Uh, radios when you hear listen to radio the version of running with the devil is different than the one that i've heard for years on my album it's like it's been a they've switched uh the last verse around and it ends with them doing the running with the devil and the bam 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 you know it's it's not the version that's on the album and i'm wondering where, where that came from is it just something they made for fixed up for radio or something for classic rock radio I've Next time you hear it on the radio, listen, you'll realize it's not the same version on the album. Not is there a single that. edit of that? Is that what you're thinking? Maybe, maybe it could have, you know, it may be on that, maybe the version's on that best of CD. I've never listened to anything else on that CD except those new tracks, you know, Meanwhile's Magic and stuff. So I don't know, it could be, but I, I, I've i noticed it the last few times I've heard it. And I'm like, that's just not the same version that. There, there is a radio version of it, so it's probably just the separate yeah. version. Yeah. I do want to say one thing. I get tired of David Lee Roth being criticized um, as a vocalist. I think he's a great vocalist. And I know nowadays he hits more bum notes than he ever used to, but I admire the fact that there's no backing tracks. I admire the fact he doesn't use auto tuning. Um, because believe me, if he wanted to, he could. He would sound a lot. He would sound perfect. But it, I like his attitude. And uh, you know what? He's in the 60s. Nobody's going to sound great all their life. Even Frank Sinatra lost some range. Not that I'm comparing him. I'm just saying. But I like David Lee Roth as a vocalist. I think he's a lot better. He's a better songwriter, better performer than getting credit. And uh, the other thing I don't like, I like Sammy Hagar, but I wish he would stop obsessing over David Lee Roth. I mean, that's ridiculous. Exactly. Exactly. It's a different career. You know, David Lee Roth doesn't spend his time putting them down. I'm not saying he hasn't, but they're different kind of vocalists, different kind of songwriters. You know, it, it's like possible said, like oh, you don't have to choose one or the other. There's not politics. It's rock and roll. No. Two say, different it's, bands. It's been years since Dave said anything about Sammy, and Sammy continues. And then Sammy was on Howard Stern not too long ago going, I don't have a problem with David Lee Roth. He has a problem with me. And then he goes and continues to badge Dave in interviews. That's why I can't stand Sammy Hagar. Like, and nobody ever calls him out. Yeah. It's like, and I think, I really do believe the reason people don't call him out is because people believe him. People yeah. believe everything he says. They don't do research to find out. When he says, I sold more in Van Halen, they don't do the research to find out no, that. That's, 
Yeah, the fr- Van Halen won in 1984 alone. Sold more than Art. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like they're what uh, diamond, right? Over yeah. diamond at this yeah. point. Oh, yeah, over, over diamond. And, yeah, and you know, and he just and he says that Van Halen played to half arenas before he joined. That's not true. That's not I, true. I was there. I saw. Yeah, yeah I, I saw, saw the reunion out. tour. That's not true at all. Yeah, I no. saw sold out shows, man. I saw Diver Down in 1984 played two nights at the Sportatorium. 5150 played one night. And that wasn't sold out. I was there. It wasn't a sold out show like the Dave years. I'm telling you, as far as South Florida goes, it was a downgrade. People weren't as excited as uh, for Vangina than they were for Van Halen. At least, for, you know, when I stopped going. I, I did go to OUA one too because Metallica, you know, I never saw Metallica. Cliff Burton never came to Florida. So. The monster, the yeah, monster. I saw, actually, Ralph, I saw Metallica. You didn't see it when they opened for Ozzy? Because I saw it at the Lakeland Civic Center. Oh, and down here, we, down, here, down here we got Queensryche. Oh. See, see yeah, I, didn't, that's I didn't even know that. I didn't even know they played Lakeland with Metallica. When they played, they yeah. must have left right think, after that because it was Queensryche. Yeah, it's either Lakeland or Bayfront Center. I don't remember. I remember being there. I had Metallica master of puppets and ride the lightning but i didn't have kill them all but i'd never i never saw him live or anything but it till then and it was it was a great show um i was blown away because i'd I'd never been to a thrash show i never saw raven or venom or any of those guys i like prior to metallica so it was amazing to me that i remember Anyway, Ralph, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, that's cool, man. Keep 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 it flowing. Let's keep talking. The the chat is flowing with uh, so many comments, Ralph. We got yeah, thirty two yeah. people watching this. Uh, well, what are they saying, dude? They saying. Uh, they see. Uh, let's see. There's so many things going on here. It's hard to keep up. But uh, Martin Popoff is talking in here. I recently did a SOT episode where Van Halen was rated as a band where it's hard to pick a favorite album. It actually makes you angry trying. That's uh, true. Collins, uh, Collins still picking his songs. Out of Love is a great pick. Um, on Fire, somebody said. Out of Love. Uh, overlook, Colin overlooked Alex Syndrome. Life's, oh, I don't know what this is. Uh, How about the last album? How about Chinatown? That was a great song. I think oh, great, too great tune. Uh, some, some guy, a Music is Life podcast. Uh, I don't know who that guy is, but he says, thanks for rocking my tea. Yeah, uh, he, says, he says, Cheers, Ralph and Manny. Oh, uh, from Lou Mavs. Uh, his name sounds familiar. Yeah. Uh, He's in this band called Severed Angel. You should check him out. Oh, wait, is that this band right here that, that just released a CD May 2nd? All right, plug it, Wayne. Plug oh my that. god, Severed Angel. Lou Mavs is in my band, Severed Angel. And uh, you can go to severedangel.bandcamp.com and get a CD right here. See that? And, and it's he's got bonus gone. tracks. And the intro, yes, tell him, Ralph. Who's on my intro? Yeah, the intro is a spoken word by me. Yeah, you're on there. I'm on the album, and it's an awesome album. I highly recommend it. Go to their band camp. Uh, you can sample the songs there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Actually, so Ralph, somebody put the album up, yeah. So Ralph was like your Orson Welles on the Man of War album? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> was the Dark Speaking of Ralph, my daughter got me this record day release for my birthday. And look who is quoted on great Alice Cooper, as my family calls him. Wayne, you just heard so much about Alice Cooper for me. He's going to ban me from the show eventually. But there it is from Ralph. Um, and I'm very to be on an Alice album is a good place for you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, I was very psyched when I got on that hype sticker. Because I love yeah. Little Wayne. I think that's an awesome album. And uh, just it to is get on awesome. hype stickers, that was choice and uh yeah so um any more comments there wayne yeah, there's plenty ryland says uh drop dead legs ain't talking about love out of control atomic punk running with the devil somebody says uh tony deal rules yes he does uh sam freely i put women and children first and fair warning over the self-titled despite how much i love and adore it uh 1980 invasion huntington uh, West Virginia, I guess that's what that means. Uh, I was 16, and a simple rhyme is my favorite Van Halen tune. Love it. 
And oh, then, man, uh, that music, music is life guy keeps talking. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, Martin Popoff, ha ha ha. Sounds like Charlie Watts. Don't ever call me your drummer. You're my singer. Oh, because uh, me, and, me and Lou are going at it in the chat here. I hate Lou Mavs, by the way. <laughs> Lou is awesome. You're not that yeah. awesome, but Lou is awesome. Yeah, no, I'm not good at all. No, awesome. You're not that awesome as a person, but you're an awesome drummer. I'll give you that. No, it's all fake. It's all uh, computerized. I just so, put my name uh, on it. Oh, you're <laughs> using Molly <laughs> Green Track. Yes. <laughs> all right. So my Van Halen question for both of you is, what was your opinion on Van Halen 3 with Gary Sherrill? What did you guys think? I've never heard it. Uh, really? You never listened to it? I've ne- I, I heard the singles. And I went and saw them on that tour. Uh, great yeah. show. Gary did an excellent job. 90% of the set was David Lee Roth era stuff. Um, I actually met Gary a few years ago, and uh, after an M3 show, he came, was in a, uh, a restaurant we were in afterwards, and he actually came over and hung out with us for a little while, and I told him about seeing the show, and, and, and I told him that I really enjoyed it because he did so much Roth material, and he said when he went in for the first rehearsal, they were like, what songs do you want to do? You pick the set list. And he said, I wanted to do the Dave stuff because that's what he grew up on. And uh, yeah, it was a great show. But like I said, I've never listened to the album as a, as a whole. I remember I, the first single that was on the radio. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. but uh, 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 yeah, Without yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something we can work it out or something like that. Yeah, uh, without you, it's cool. Yeah. yeah, I actually liked that song. I thought it was pretty good, and I hate extreme. I was never an extreme fan. And I like extreme. When I, I uh, when I heard him being on Van Halen, and I heard that song without you, I thought it was really cool. And I got the album. And I, I thought some of it was cool. Nowadays, I, I, I tried to listen to it recently, and I don't feel the same about it anymore. It's, it, the songs are pretty. Wayne froze. He's weird first. i mean nothing really kind of worked i froze, I oh, froze. Nice. am i back we're back am i back now yeah all right it doesn't matter what i said uh i i, I heard van halen three like maybe a couple years ago for the first time because somebody donated for me to do a uh-huh. track by track mm. right and man the the tone the the sound of eddie's guitar is so weak on that album mm. that's one thing that stood out is like Damn that that sound that sound of that guitar. Was he crazy. going through something though during that period of time? Didn't something he happen? He was going through a lot. But did you see who produced that thing? You guys remember Mike Post? You know who Mike he Post. is? No. The guy that wrote theme songs. He, yes, yes, he wrote yeah. for Hill Street Blues. Right. NYPD that, Blue. He worked that's with who this guy it? named Stephen Bochco, who did all these landmark TV shows. Yeah, yeah. But that's who produced that yeah, album. But, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and uh, and it, 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 you know, he's not a hard rock heavy metal producer in his shows. I think, um, I don't like the album, I think there's a lot of great song ideas, but I really think that's a case where Eddie Van Halen needed a producer. Though I've heard some friends who are musicians, and I'm not a musician, I'm a hack musician, not a good musician, but I've heard friends who are musicians who say it's a musician's album, but you know. I, I don't I don't know if I totally buy that. I just think songwriting. He definitely needed a producer. That band needed a producer for that album. And Mike Post probably was afraid to tell Eddie Van Halen that's a bad idea, or good idea. I was speculating. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's produced it. So I just wanted you guys' opinion on it. So. Yeah, I'm very disappointed. I gotta say, the last one, Different Kind of Truth, may be their heaviest album. I think. Mm. I think it's fun. Oh. I think it's it. the heaviest Van Halen album. No, though none of none of those songs made my list. But uh, man, as is Honey Baby Sweetie Doll, Chinatown, Bullethead. I mean, there's a lot of great tunes. And the 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 one of the worst songs on it was Tattoo, and that's what they put out first. <laughs> yeah, that threw, I think that threw a lot of people for a loop, and they were like, "I'm not buying that. That sucks," you know. Yep, and uh, I like the song, but it's my least favorite on the album. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad song, but it's just not the best song. I mean, it's the weakest song in this album, probably for sure. Yeah, I think musically it's a weak song, but I like the the lyric where the lyrics are cool. David, You're right. It yeah, is. Yeah, where David Lee Roth mentions his uncle who had a uh, his union number on his uh, mm-hmm. yeah. arm, and 
you know, keep in mind also that, you know, da David Lee Roth is, uh, comes from a Jewish background, so there's also kind of a significance of that song, a lot deeper than, than people realize. Anyway, musically, I agree it's the weakest song, but that's another thing. I think David Lee Roth is unrated vocalist. Of, not vocalist, I've already said that, lyricist. I think he's yeah. very clever. I think he has very. a great sense of humor. He reminds me of Bon Scott, not because they write alike, but because those two men had a sense of humor about themselves and it showed in the lyrics. And uh, I think that was one of the, both of those guys' strengths. That's my opinion on that. I think oh. Dave's voice is pure attitude. And that's what oh. I, I loved about his voice. It was attitude. It was organic. You know, it's not like these technical, oh, Sammy Hager is technically better. Honestly, look, a lot of people love Sammy's voice, and that's cool. His voice annoys me, man. It's like a very annoying voice to me. I prefer David Roth organic and that swagger he had and the killer, amazing mm -hmm. lyrics. Uh, the guy was just, and nobody, nobody can touch David Lee Roth as far as a front man from the 80s. You know, I mean, yeah, seeing him now is kind of like a creepy uncle, but seeing him back in the 80s, man, was he would just walk in the front of the stage with one spotlight on him for five minutes and not say a word while the whole arena's banging on their chairs, going nuts. He just had this aura about him that I've never seen any front man ever possess uh, how he would grab that audience in his hand. It just, he was just the best. I thought, I think he's the greatest front man ever. That's my opinion. I know a lot of people will say Freddie Mercury, this and that, which they're all great too. But I never, fortunately, never got to see Freddie. I saw, yeah, him, you know, and he was the yeah. best, the greatest, I think. And, you know, what are the odds? The greatest front man makes a band with the greatest guitar player ever. That's just, it was just magic back then, man. Van I Hill saw him, I saw him on the, uh, uh, his first solo tour as well, the Eat Him and Smile, and that was just amazing. He I really, he was. really went all out on that one. I mean, oh, it was yeah, all about him. He, he didn't have to anybody to to uh, you know criticize anything he wanted to do on stage or whatever when he had the giant microphone and all that stuff. It was just really tongue in cheek, but it was really really cool. Oh yeah, no, he, his smile to me was as high caliber as the Van Halen shows. It was relentless, and uh, two sh two nights he played down here where Van Halen only did one night. You know, with Sammy Hagar. Uh, but um, I'm surprised nobody picked Hot for Teacher. Oh, you know what? Well, the drum parts on that kick ass. By oh, the way. I don't even oh, yeah. know Excuse where me. to begin to like copy that drum beat. Ever. Yeah, I, really. I have no idea what the hell he's doing. Hot for Teacher for me is the best song off '84. I know a lot of people because it's a hit, but I think that's the closest to classic Van Halen on any. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Song. And to me, it's the greatest music video ever made. It's mm -hmm. awesome when it turns into color and the teacher's a stripper. It's just that's awesome <laughs> how that 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 got past censors back yeah, in yeah, yeah. pretty woman lasted a little while on MTV and they had to ban it. Right. And they banned it because their explanation back then that wouldn't fly today, they banned it because it was a transsexual at the end. That's why they banned it. You know? It was because she was getting whipped, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, well, at the end when the rig came off, yeah. that's what they, they banned it for. And it was like, really? They, that wouldn't fly today. They they'd let that video play today if the transsexual, you know. <laughs> well, uh, the, many, there's a midget, there's a transgender, transsexual, David Lee Ross dressed as Napoleon. Yeah. None of it makes any sense, but you know. Oh, it, it is pretty much a terrible video, but yeah, it's got its charm, but yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah, it doesn't even sync up with the music that much, you know. Yeah. I have I have a friend that just texts me. He's not he's watching us. But he texts me. He says, "You guys, uh, what do we think of uh, the way Wolfgang?" He said he feels like uh, Wolfgang is the only person that can come close to playing that style of Van Halen. that sounds like his dad. He yeah. is a chip off the block. He's he's good. Oh, wow. He's a really good player. I gotta say, I prefer Michael Anthony, but. Honestly, technically, he's about guitar. He's about own guitar, lead guitar. guitar. But technically, I think Wolfgang's better. Um, listen to the beginning of Chinatown. That's Billy Sheehan stuff he's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and what what I've heard about Wolfgang is that 
drums is what he's really the best at. And he's amazing on guitar and bass, but drums, I, I don't really know. I haven't seen him live or anything, but I thought he was great in Van Halen. I thought he was awesome. He played. Yeah, he did a great job. And it was his idea to bring Dave back, you know? So, yeah. I he, thought, picked, he picked the set list pretty much. Yeah, and he's yeah. the one that, He's the one that talked them into doing the get different kind of truth and do all those old demo songs, bring them back, yeah, you know, exactly. rework them. Which uh, yeah, wasn't he the one that dug up the tapes for his from his dad's vault? And you know, man, just yeah. the, you know, they say that he and Alex are going through the vaults now, and this, I mean, there's no sort. I mean, there's no idea of him about what they're going to come out with. Maybe if they'll come out with a box set or something in a couple of years with. There's so much unreleased. Thousands stuff. and thousands of songs that haven't been released. It's got to be insane. You know? yeah. oh, no. it's, it, and, and Michael Anthony recently came out and says he's in possession of like several uh, shows uh, mm -hmm. that were filmed. Like he has professional shows of Van Halen that he, he has in his collection that nobody has. Mm -hmm. That would be nice to come out, you know. Man, uh, <clears throat> Manny, there's two comments in here uh one was uh bond scott is the best front man ever uh, i think manny froze uh go ahead i'm hearing you or he's really thinking about it or did i freeze hmm. anyway continue somebody froze we, we can hear you you're just frozen your photo is are you all freeze i'm frozen am i frozen nope no connection well, God I will, damn it! I will say that Wayne, you're first. I will say that I think Bon Scott is the greatest lyricist ever. I think uh, he just wrote the most clever, kick-ass. You know, just I love. I'm a big Bon Scott fan. Don't get me wrong. Unfortunately, I never got to see him live, but I don't think anybody wrote better lyrics than Bon Scott. He was he was the greatest. An example from. Um, uh, the millionaire song. I can't remember the whole title where he says, I got patches on my patches. On my no patches. Wait, I'm the millionaire. Is Wayne gone? <laughs> it lost him. Yeah, he's gone. Oh. Yeah, Wayne doesn't like Bon Scott. Um, but you said he, he's got patches over patches. Of my old blue jeans. Well, they used to be new when they used to be blue. When they used, they to, used to be clean. clean. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, like, just keeps moving around, man. Yeah. Amazing stuff. So, yeah, a lot of people think Bon Scott's the greatest frontman, and I can't argue with it. I just think it's Dave because I actually saw it. And the magic of Daily Roth was just something I've never seen anybody. Um, That's the next show. we got to do ACDC, top 10 ACDC songs. Want to do that? Well, most of yeah. that will be Bon Scott stuff. I would tell you that right out front, you know. Let's do that, Tony. Let's let's plan. Uh, how are you on next uh, next Friday? Let me let you know. I got to look at the calendar, but I think I'm good. All right. All right. Now we'll pick another day during the week because now I'm going to be doing a lot of these YouTube live shows. I go out and party on the weekends, man. <laughs> but all right, guys. Well, I want to thank you. Anything uh, you want to plug? No, I don't listen have to Van talking. Halen. All right, yeah. <laughs> and watch them. And uh, yeah, so thanks. Oh, wait, Wayne is back. Let me add Wayne. Let's see him come Where'd back. He Where'd he go? Yeah. There. Hey, Wayne. He's, he's, he's terrified. What's going on? What oh, oh, there is there's me. Unbelievable. Where was I? Did you leave? Because you're reading the comments. I was reading the comments. Oh yeah, one of them said that uh, Bon Scott is the best frontman ever. That was for you, Manny. Mm -hmm. And the other right. comment was from Martin Pop Martin Popoff. You're gonna love this one. Uh, you know who's uh, a great frontman? Money uh, Ronnie Monroe. Uh, isn't he no, he did not say that. He Get said that. <laughs> he, did he said not it. Say Ronnie Monroe. He did too. He did to my Ronnie from Metal Church. Yeah, it's right here in the chat. Wait, I'll tell you a story eventually yeah, about Ronnie, Ronnie from Metal Ronnie. Church. I like Ronnie. He's a good guy, man. I just saw him with <laughs> I just saw him with Vicious Rumors uh, a few weeks ago, actually. Yep. I like I like the albums he was on. Way to the World. Uh, 
Metal Church. I just heard the, just heard the we, new we Metal Church a, album today, and is man, it, it's is killer. With, we have a bone to pick with Ronnie Monroe. Uh, Mark yeah, Lopez like sounds Jack a lot like Monroe. David Lane. A you, lot like yeah, David Lane. You heard the whole new album today? Yeah. Yeah, I, I got to check it out because I've heard like three songs so far, and I absolutely love it. Man, them. he's got the David Wayne scream down pat. I mean, it, it sounds like it, man. It's cool. Yeah, Definitely got to check that out. And uh, so, wait. Yeah, we have a bone to pick with Ronnie Monroe anyway on, over on Rat Sound Review. <laughs> Would you like to share with us? Twice he was supposed to come on the show, and he, he backed out twice. Well, that's because he's awesome. Like like Martin said, yeah, sure he is. He's busy, man. <laughs> he's real. Busy. Hey, he wanted to do the interview. I don't give a shit. You know what he's doing? I was having him on the show. Don't do interviews if you can't come on. I had the first time. You know, you get you get pissed the first time they don't come on, and you give him a second chance after two times. I'm done. Yeah, well, it have is what heard, it is. Have you ever heard from Kim Ruz again? No, I have not, and I've tried a few times to get in contact with him because his wife um, actually works at a hospital. And right when COVID started, he was telling me he was, he was really afraid with all this COVID stuff when it first started. So, uh, you know, I wanted to see what was going on with him and everything, but no, he never responded back to any emails. I don't know. Uh, I'm not aware of any interview Kim Rose has done, except the one we did with him. Nope. Me That's neither. Like the only one that ever interviewed Kim Rose. I think so. And I sent him a, a t-shirt too, and it apparently never got to him. So I, I don't know. Who knows if he even talked to Kim Rose? It could have been like an impersonator. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we have no idea because we didn't see his face. You know, we have no idea. I don't know what the hell he sounds like. Could just been some random homeless guy that, that knew about Merciful Fate back in the eighties and you know came on the show. Who knows? <laughs> but in our in our minds, that's who we talk to, Kim Rose. Yeah, so let's just say we talk to Kim Rose. That's fine by me. I'll go with that. Regardless. So uh, hey, before we go, have you guys ever read this Van Halen? Book? Sorry, we got to go, Manny. Uh, have a good night, everybody. I, I, I have it, Manny. And I also have it. On okay. The- I, I, well, I recommend it. If you guys get it, you guys see it out in the wild. Pick it up, Van Halen. Yeah, I need to check that one out. I don't have that. I read the one that Noel Monk did. That was great. That's, a, that's the best one. But but yeah, that one's great. Greg Renolf, right? Did that book? Was it Greg Renolf? Uh, yeah. Yep. That's correct. We that's interviewed correct. him. We interviewed him in... Uh, in Nashville, and you know, Ian, Ian, and I have that mutual hatred for Sammy Hagar, and we just like grilled him on how much you know Sammy sucks. And he was trying to be diplomatic, and then at the end, he's like, eh, "It's all about Dave, man." He just wanted uh, to put it back. Yeah. In the in the chats, they want us to do ACDC next. Yeah, uh, all right. right. Yeah, Tony came up with that, so the next yeah. one will be top ten ACDC tunes. And they want uh, Martin Popoff to join. Martin. Cool. Is Martin still there? Martin, let us Martin know. Martin is still here. He is still here. And he's still yeah, if you want to do it next next Friday, we'll go ahead and make it a date. We'll do it. It's cool. Yeah, Martin, if you could do next Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, I, we'd love to have you, man. Uh, uh, Rich Love says, what's the worst band you guys ever heard? System of uh, Down. System of Down. I've heard worse. Yeah, that, well, that, 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 uh, last I've actually time. heard worse bands. They would have worn the worst bands I've ever seen live, especially a national act. Last hard man for me. Oh God, that Who? album was Who? awful. Yeah. Who is it? Last hard men. Last hard men. I mean, it was that's Sebastian a band Bach name? and some of the breeders. Mm. Band the breeders, not the uh, breeders. Breeders. What about what about you, Manny? Uh, and Martin Popoff said yes, he can do that. So he, I yeah. guess he will be here. Cool. Uh, I actually uh, like this band, but I saw him at the tail end. Uh, it's not my favorite because I'm not a huge fan, but. Ario Speedwagon during the grunge era, which I hate calling the grunge era, they were playing like, uh, they were still trying to play arenas with Trickster. So this must have been 1990. I don't even know why it went. And they weren't bad, but I felt like they were just treading water, you know, going through the motions, which they probably oh, yeah. were. I've seen a lot of bands do that. Yeah. I, I'm, a yeah. big, I'm a big fan of 70s Ario. Yeah, me too. I agree. I, I do like that stuff, especially. I like the early album. early eighties stuff as well, but the seventies stuff is the best. Yeah. Nine Lives and the REO album. Gary Richroth was a beast. Yeah, Gary, uh, yeah. He was killer. I, was I saw, Gary, I saw Gary probably 
early nineties. He was playing in a little club in Raleigh, just in, in North Carolina. He was just playing this little club. They were advertising on the radio and he just had a band and he was playing and we went and checked them out and they did a bunch of REO songs and met him afterwards. Of course, didn't, didn't have camera phones back then to get a photo or anything with him. Just kind of spared a moment, but it was cool. Yeah, um, it, it's kind of funny. They get this reputation for being a ballad band, which I guess they were sort of. But yeah, in the 80s. You listen to those early 70s albums, and that is not a ballad band. You know? Yeah. That, yeah. First, that first album was kind of deep purplish, very heavy. Yeah. I wonder yeah. what Martin, I, I like to ask Martin Popoff about the first REO album. What's he think of that? Because it's very, it's proto metal to me, that early stuff, you know. Gypsy Woman Passion and Sophisticated Lady, which I ripped off. I have a song, uh, which I'm sure, Tony, you know, the, the song um, Wake Up the Smell of Thrash. Right. Uh, that's a rip off of Sophisticated Lady. Really? No. My, my they have puppets in their video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, I played it for my friends back to back, and they're like, I don't hear it. I go, man, it's so odd. The I'm going to have to go check this out. I mean, it's the verses. The verses are so oh. terrible. You I, mean like the, the vocal melody? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and I figured, who the hell would know, you know <laughs> a sophisticated lady that's into thrash? Somebody listening with somebody's mom said, that sounds like Kevin Cronin. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the worst band I ever heard is called Grave Danger. I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, we oh, wow. we did like we did like a spoof video on like like a reaction type video on Red Cell Review, and we picked their songs called uh, Modern Dark Age, and it is so bad. It's it's terrible. The singer has uh, mutton chops, uh, <laughs> and he's got long hair, and he does not sing in tune with the music. And the video it makes them look like they're in some kind of like ap- apocalyptic like world or something. Meanwhile, they're in like some park, and in the video, some guy riding his bike goes past. <laughs> it is fucking hilarious. People need to go and check that out. It has thirty seven point seven thousand views. I don't know how. I think they're all bots. They have to be. But uh, to, to this day, that was like what's the name grave, of the band? Grave danger. All I right. mean, you can watch you can watch any video and just you're just gonna laugh at anything because it's just hilarious. Tony, but, you're really gonna subject your ears to this band? I, I want to see the video with the guy who rides behind the box. Yeah, you, you gotta watch it. It's funny. But to this day, we did that spoof um, that reaction video about maybe three years ago or so, and to this day, we still get people bitching and complaining at us for not liking the band. Hey, the what band about is terrible. talk about videos, Ralph? What about the cool Van Halen video with the dinosaurs finally came yeah. out last year? Uh, and you know, Tony, there's something funny about that. I've read about because I've seen pictures of it, and what I have read was that was a video for One Foot Out the Door, which I guess is wrong because it's yeah. So this yeah. is, but yeah, and they also made a video for uh, Loss of Control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I think I've got that on a tape somewhere, yeah. which is more professionally looking than than Pretty Woman, you know. Mm-hmm. They're all like in doctor outfits and shit. It's really an interesting video. There's a lot of rare Van Halen stuff out there. And a lot of stuff that nobody's ever seen, you know? I remember when I first started collecting like bootleg videos and stuff. I mean, one of the, you know, you could only find like, they used to show the video clip on MTV for Dance Tonight Away, the live, you know, clip. And then I found out that there was, uh, there's a You're No Good and. um, Uh, Bottoms Up. Bottoms Up, yep. From that same little concert, you know. I wonder if that concert exists because that or the one from the Unchained Fair Warning. Well, well that really one, that it. one, that one doesn't exist, according to Michael Anthony. They only filmed those three songs. Wow. But now that '79 one, I would love to know if that's complete. Mm-hmm. I would love to see that. You know. Yeah, I have a bootleg video. There was, uh, it's there was this uh, arena in Maryland. They have yeah. film all their concerts on videotape. And that's yeah. where a lot of the bootlegs have come from, you know, mm-hmm. if you remember. Because yeah. I have one of Van Halen. Capital uh, back in Capital Center. Yes, thank you. ACDC. Yeah. Aerosmith. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a shitload of them from Art, there. Art has one from that place. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a, there, the rumor is uh, there's a Randy Rhodes one from that, that venue. 
Uh, I don't know if uh, I believe it. I believe it because they filmed everything apparently, yeah. you know. And so. Sharon's in possession of it, so we don't know if it'll all be released. But there is a pro shot with Randy Rhodes from that arena, is the rumor I've heard. And uh, boy, I would love oh, to. It's kind of funny what exists out there. Do you guys remember the uh, promoter Bill Graham? He used to own Fillmore East and West yeah. over in New York. Yeah. He would film uh, a lot of his shows, and when he died, they sold the building and they found all this film footage. Of course, all the rights are tied up. And it's a one camera shot. So he's got shots of Hendrix, the doors. I don't know about Led Zeppelin, but I get, I, you know, maybe they're not worthy uh, putting out because it's literally one camera. That's all it was, just pointing the stage. You can see it on the Band of Gypsies, Jimi Hendrix, if you look online, what it looks like. It's black and white, you know. He used to film all those ones. Out. He used to film all the Winterland shows as well. From yes, the, yeah, yeah and that's from that. that's. So there's a tons of film. A lot of bands I'm not interested in, Quicksilver Messenger, or whatever. I'm mm -hmm. sure they're fine, but not my thing. No. But it's interesting. This footage exists, but nobody's doing anything with it. It just sits in a vault somewhere. You know? Well, my favorite, my favorite Kiss show is that Winterland. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you look at if you find it on YouTube now. A friend of mine mm -hmm. just took it and ran it through some kind of process and colorized it. I heard, yeah, I saw yeah. some of it. Man. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, was yeah, but good. that Winterland, what they filmed that, right, Ralph? Because that's more than one camera, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was. Mm -hmm. yeah, also, a six Grand Illusion was filmed from the Winterland as well. I've yeah. got a. I've got your favorite Sammy Hagar live from Winterland, and Neil Sean comes out with the huge afro at the end and jams with him. That's pretty cool. They play some Montrose and stuff. Pretty cool. Hey, you know that HSAS is not that bad. I love that album. That's my. That's probably my favorite thing Sammy Hagar has ever done. It's a yeah, great. That that's actually a good album. You know, I. I uh, you bring up Neil Sean. I forgot about. Yeah. You know what I just yeah, ordered? Yeah. It's probably outside because I ordered it on Amazon. Neil Sean just released the CD DVD of. You know what I'm talking about, Tony? Journey. Oh, Journey. Journey through time. time. Yeah. Yeah, it should yeah. be out my door now because I ordered it yesterday. I'm done. I need to get that, man. I want to see that. Con that's what I want to see. I want to see him tour as with that version. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not, that's not gonna I happen. don't know. It's it's not not what they're going through right now, they may have no choice. <laughs> I hope they do because I can't stand Jonathan Kane. I love Greg Raleigh, you know? Yeah. I want to go. Greg Raleigh. Raleigh's a better. How did Jonathan Kane end up with the co writes? He's not an original member. I'll forget it. And we're not going to get into that. But, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's another story. Yeah, he, he, he's yeah. part of the corporation now. They get. Yeah. So. Well, then, yeah, but I don't know. I, I I just see these bands turning into name brands like uh, Box exactly. Tide or something. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I mean, original I, I, members. Man, that Ralph, that oh. meme, that meme you shared earlier from Family Guy with the Tommy Thayer thing killed uh, me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love how like Mark St. John's like me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I find the greatest shit on 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 my Facebook. Yeah. A lot of like minded people, you know. I'm part of these groups. Like I'm in this group called Sammy Hagar sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the scab hating kiss ones. And, you know, it's just endless all day. I keep finding these funny ass. So, cool. so a good friend of mine, Scott Board, is the new singer for Vinnie Vincent. Oh, he's a friend of yours. Yeah, he's he's. I've known Scott for years, and uh, he he sings in a metal band called Cerebus that had an album out, back, kind of a cult metal record from back in the eighties. Great singer, and he sounds a lot like Robert Fleischman. I just I just hope he gets a chance to play live. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. that high. Do you, do you think it's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Do you I, think it's going to happen, Tony? 50-50. I hope so. Scott, I hope Scott can encourage him. Man, Scott's a good dude, and he maybe he can light a fire under his ass and get him to play live. You know? Well, and he just heard the 70, I think, so he doesn't have all the time in the world. Yeah, he is pretty old, if you think about it. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. tell Scott, I tell Scott to get a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah. But yeah. supposedly the album, the album has Robert Fleischman singing on the album that they say is going to come out this year. Didn't they have like a listening party? <laughs> yeah, that's that's where Scott sang at the at the party. They oh, oh, so they actually perform. They suppose, yeah, and of course you couldn't have cell phones or anything, so no, there's no footage yeah. of it. 
Uh, with a drummer too, you know, it was a full played, band. Yeah, they said he played with a full band. Wow. Yeah. Now, that, some lo- local, some local musicians, I guess they're from Nashville. Yeah, it's probably got some session guys that come in and charted it out and probably kicked ass on it. You know, they said Vinny played great. Well, Vinny does play exactly how he did in the 80s. I mean, you know, whether you like it or not, he still plays the same, you know. And uh, but as far as I know, I believe this is the first time he's ever played with a live band since his coming out. Uh, yeah. Four years ago, five years ago. Yeah. He's actually played live. Yeah, because wow. when I was at that convention that he that he did in Atlanta, he just played Unplugged. He and Robert Fleischman did it uh, back on the streets, Unplugged together. And that was it, you know. And they didn't even do the whole song. Yeah, I know. It was just them with acoustic, and and then that went to crap. Something happened there. I think what right. was it you know, some legal issues between him and and Fleshman? No, what what I understood was they were going to do a show, and they put Robert Fleischman's name real small on the bottom with Carmine Apiece and Tony Franklin really big above them, and and, yeah. and I'm like what the hell, man? And he pulled out because of that, but. I'm amazed. I, I I heard. I thought Robert Fletcher was back with Vinny, but I guess not. Now he's just going to be on the album, and that's it. Interesting. I saw Robert was doing. He's doing like an a, an a electronic type album or something. And I saw he's he's always working on something odd. He's a good dude. I had him on my podcast. Now. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. I met him a couple times. Yeah, now, I, he discovered me because I did a Vinny Vincent review of the first album and i completely trashed it and i said that he sounded like a cat being tortured and he wrote me and he goes i just saw your review and i agree with you man <laughs> you know i thought he was gonna i was like oh but he, <laughs> he was like he, he, he agreed he said he did like the album but he thought that they pushed them to sing that way and he, yeah he he was very over the top on that because i mean you listen to you know there's some footage of him singing with journey on you can find on youtube and yes. he, didn't sing, he didn't sing like that when he was in journey you know he, oh, no, he the, yeah. the first vinnie vincent album is so much kind of like the first nitro album it's just totally just over oh. the top you know well, how far can we push this you know i just played it for my coworker the other day because i was telling him about scott getting that gig and i my coworker's a young guy. He's like 26. He'd never heard Vinnie Vincent Invasion. I played him uh, Twisted and Animal when he does that ripping solo. And he's just like, that's just like a bunch of notes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, it is. I mean, it really is. Did, you guys have seen, obviously, Kiss footage when Vinnie Vincent used to take the guitar solo on those Creature of the Night tours? And the look on Gene he's and Paul. He's talented, but yeah, it, it, just, it just goes on and on and on. And it's like, it's just not deep purple. Nobody's impressed. People want to be, you know, I, I you know what I mean. You know, I, I was I was lucky because when I saw the Creatures of the Night tour, he did a guitar solo, but he didn't overdo it. But when I saw the Lick It Up tour, yeah, he overdid it that on that show. But maybe that night he wasn't feeling good and just did a short solo. But no, the can you didn't see the cane come out from the side of the stage and pull him off. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> And I, Man, he's a talented guy, though. Well, he, he, he really writes, is. I, I think, he, I, and I know a lot of people disagree, but I think he saved Kiss. I think he wrote. I don't think some it, great songs. I don't think Kiss has made an album as good as "Lick It Up" since. "Lick It Up" is my oh. second favorite Kiss album after "Rock and Roll Over." There you go. That That's saying a lot. Well, and he, uh, I think it's write. a great album, and I think he's a great songwriter. But I think he needed Gene and Paul to rein him in, or it would have been like the Vinnie Vincent invasion. So. Well, that there you go. I mean, the Vinnie Vincent invasion shows you how powerful Gene and Paul were to his talent because yeah. they reined him in, like you said, they they controlled him, and he played great on those two albums. I mean, most of Creatures of the Night, he didn't play on all of it. Now, just imagine to tie this into what we our subject for tonight. Just imagine if 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 Eddie had joined Kiss like he asked Gene about, they would have had to create some character for him. Of course, I think they would have had to drop the makeup then. That's when they would have had to do it. That was around Creatures' time period, if I if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was. To, no, you're not mistaken. Dropping the makeup and him for a guitar player. <laughs> mm. But how would that work? I can't see an Eddie Van Halen fitting into Kiss's music. Yeah. Well, I mean, Vinnie well, Vincent didn't really fit in with his style, but it worked. Yeah. It, it worked. But, 
But if you yeah, really, but if you listen to what Vinnie Vincent did before Kiss, it was kind of disco-ish pop. Now, granted, maybe he was doing that to pay the bills. Yeah, you know? he was I a session know. guy. He was that, a I, yes, I, yeah. I think because it was Creature of the Night. See, Creature of the Night doesn't sound like other Kiss albums. It's more metal. Yeah, yeah. Eddie would have fit better with that type of music than, you know, Take Me or. You know, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Creatures or Lick It Up style. Yeah, he would have, he would have fit perfect in that. He would have fit perfect on that. And who knows if all that's true. He said uh, he was unhappy with David Lee Roth, went to the studio and told uh, Jeannie he wanted to join the band. Now, I don't know if that's true or not because you think about it, Eddie wants to join Kiss and they're going to say no. Mm. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I call bullshit on that. Well, yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's probably a yeah. Sammy Hagar story, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gene, Gene was like, go back and make up with Dave. It's like, come on. Gene, <laughs> Gene would have taken any second, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe, but maybe Paul Stanley would have gone, wait a minute, there's not enough room for three stars in this band. I don't know. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> but I was, I was extremely impressed with Vinnie Vincent because I was – really pissed off going to the show and here on the radio ace fairly wasn't going to be there because ace has always been my favorite member and i was pissed because it was the first time me seeing kiss mm -hmm. and then man vinnie vincent blew my mind that night he was really good i mean awesome amazing i wish i could get a bootleg of that west palm beach show it was just so good it was awesome but you know well, first time I saw Kiss was Animal Eyes, and on the album it's Mark St. John, but when I saw him, Mark St. John was not there. It was uh, Bruce, Bruce. Culloch already. Same for me, yeah. yeah. But I, I didn't know who he was, because um, when they came to town, we didn't have the internet, so I had to wait for Shit Parade or Circus or something to tell me who was in the band at that time. So, see, Wayne, being a young guy, you didn't have to wait for the news like I did. Yeah, yeah okay. That well, they, they had already with the Pony Express would come by and throw me my magazine and I would get to see who, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean I, I think I had already heard by the time because I, I saw him in like January of eighty five and I think it was pretty well known that Bruce was had replaced Mark by then. Yeah, I don't yeah, I, you I, might have, I know I saw him I think I saw him after that. I'd have to look. But you may have known, but I sh I sure as hell didn't know. I know that. You know. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how bands would do a, a, a album, a tour, a album like that. Because just thinking, I saw Kiss in January of '85, and they were on Animalized tour. Then I saw them in December of '85, and they were on Asylum tour. Mm -hmm. They already done another album and come back out again. You know. It's crazy. I, I, saw, I saw them on the uh, now bands have five to ten years between albums and sometimes tours. Who knows? It's just crazy. I well, I think the, uh, if first ever, if I'm ever on another, I think if I'm ever on another podcast, we should do why it takes so long because I think it kind of hurts bands' careers in a way. Oh yeah, so I, think I, about I, it. I know of bands who were hot at one moment and they just they didn't follow up fast enough and they just went into oblivion. All right. Well, think about all of us. We are 15 years old. We get Lick It Up. The next time we get the next Kiss album, we're 24. Yeah. It's nine years. I'm just making up a time frame. We're 25 yeah. or whatever you want to say. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's true. a lot of living in between. Yeah, you know? true. But even back then, I mean, if you took three years, it sometimes. Oh, that was a lifetime. Remember, true. Boston yeah. took eight years and everyone like, oh, my God, where they been? Yeah. You, know? Yeah, you know, Boston took three years. I think, or was it two or three years? And that's felt like an oblivion. I mean, like forever in the 70s. Now, first time I believe was 76. Yeah. And then and 70, yeah. 78. 78. Second. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And it felt like forever. And that album actually, the record company pressured them to put it out because it was taking so long. And Tom Schultz is not happy with Don't Look Back. He says it's unfinished. He said Side Two is not finished. Yeah. It well, he's like a mad great. scientist, and then they and then they didn't do an, and then the next album didn't come out until '86. Yeah, way after the. Well, well, that to me is crazy, but that's me. You know? One one band who disappeared for a long time and came back and did a really good uh, reunion album. I'm wearing the T-shirt, Merciful Fate. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm about yes. in the shadows, right? In the shadows, yeah. That was a great 
comeback album. Great tour, too. Mm hmm For sure. Awesome. Yep. My favorite band with Sabbath is Merciful Fate. But um, right on, guys. So, uh, Wayne, why don't you do a little plug-in for your, for your thing, man? Everybody, right now, stop what you're doing. Go over to Rat Cell Review over on YouTube and go hit the subscribe button. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. We don't have Ralph Riera subscribers. What do you got? 27.6 thousand. One day, maybe we'll get there. What's it called? Rat Salad? Rat Salad Review. Rat Salad? Yep. Just like okay. the uh, Black Sabbath. Song. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Just like what, what Van Halen... I thought at first you said right side of the review. <laughs> Sorry, I'm from New York. Rat <laughs> Salad Review. Right Side Review. <laughs> what, Van, what Van Halen was going to call themselves back in the 70s, Rat Salad. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you can also go to severedangel.bandcamp.com and go grab a copy of my CD, which Raphael is on doing the introduction. I love I love the CD. I did, and you can see it on this channel. I did a review you did. of that CD, and I should be getting it soon. You, that should probably be out on your doorstep today. Probably. I'll go check my... The other thing you're waiting for. Yeah. So, uh, right on, guys. So, this has been great. We're going to move up next week for... ACDC's top 10 with Martin Popoff. Are you all down to be here for that next oh, Friday? Yeah, we'll I should be here. I'll, I'll have to check what I'm doing, but Wayne, you don't have to remind me. I'll remind but you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, Ralph. Hey, man. My pleasure, man. You're invited anytime. And the same goes for you, Tony, and uh, Wayne. Yeah, you know, whatever. All right. I That's love it. you, Wayne. I goof with Wayne too much, though. <laughs> it's a, I can take it, Ralph. I'm not a little wimp, all right? You're, you're a good dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break character now. Wayne has helped me in a lot of things, and I appreciate all you've done for me, my friend. Oh, stop it. I haven't done that much. Now, screw you. All right. Yeah, we're, back, you. we're back to the old thing. You can go fuck yourself now. All, all right. right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put on some Good night, guys. Stuff. And thank you, everybody watching. Thank you that, that left uh, comments. And, we'll, and there'll be a lot of these live shows coming up now. Yeah, there's a lot of comments in here going on. There's so many people in here. I can't keep up with this, but there's 31 people. I think that most we have was 36, but there's a now, lot. Ralph, will this be on the channel where you can watch it later? Just yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it up. Okay, cool, cool. So everybody, um, thank you again for being here. Thank you for joining me, guys. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, smack them up. Smack a gob. And listen to Black Sabbath. Uh, bye. I'll go by severalangel.com. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How do I get off YouTube? I have no idea. Help! Somebody help us! <laughs> no, on the more...